This is Geometry Lesson 5.5, and we're going to talk about the last of our special quadrilaterals or parallelograms in this lesson. We have three special parallelograms. The first is a rhombus. So a rhombus is a parallelogram, meaning I know that all the sides are parallel. I have two parallel right there and two parallel right there. What's special about a rhombus, by definition, is that all four sides are congruent. So that's what I know about a rhombus so far. So some additional information. The diagonals of a rhombus are blank, and they blank. So let's add some diagonals and see what we see. So a diagonal goes from A to C. Another diagonal goes from B to D. Definitely not congruent. One is very long. One is kind of shorter. But if I tilt my head to the side, I notice that that looks like a 90 degree angle. And in fact, every time you have a rhombus, the diagonals will always be perpendicular. So not only do I have a rhombus, a four-sided shape with parallel sides, I also have four right triangles that I could utilize if I needed to. Okay, what else do I notice about these diagonals? Well, just like the regular parallelogram, I notice that this half and this half are the same length. One, two, three, one, two, three, going the other direction as well. So they bisect each other. My second box here says the blank of a rhombus blank the angles of a rhombus. So I'm looking at the angles of the rhombus, and I have the diagonals already drawn there, and what I notice is this angle here is cut in half. And this angle here is cut in half, and they are in fact the same four angles now. Same thing happens with A and C. This one here, and this one here, this one here, and this one here. So not only do I have the same angle on A and C, the same angle on D and B, but those angles are cut in half, so now I have four congruent angles, two on D, two on B, two on A, two on C. The diagonals of a rhombus bisect the angles of a rhombus. Continuing on to the rectangle, my second special parallelogram. Like I said, I already know that it's a parallelogram, I already know that I have four right angles. That's what we know. That's our current definition for rectangle, four right angles. So the diagonals are blank and they blank. Let's add some diagonals and see what happens. Here's one. Here's another. Those are not perpendicular anymore. One angle looks a lot smaller, one angle looks a lot larger. But I did draw the same length. They are congruent. And the halves are the same, too, so let's just throw that on there right away. I see A to this point here. Let's just give it a name. AM, BM, CM, DM, they are all the same length. So the diagonals themselves from A to C and B to D are congruent. And the halves are the same, so they bisect each other. Now I have one more special parallelogram. It's a square. And a square is like if a rhombus and a rectangle had a baby, it'd be a square. It has the four congruent sides, just like a rhombus. It has the four congruent angles, just like a rectangle. So all of the info we wrote about rhombus and rectangle, we're going to put the exact same information on the square. Let's see if I can get this all to fit. Um, the diagonals are congruent. So here's congruent diagonals that bisect each other. They're also perpendicular. So I've created four right triangles. And my last piece of information is that the diagonals bisect the angles.
so I got those four 90s in my four corners. That gives me eight 45s. So a 45 in every corner after I bisect them with the diagonals. I have one example, just a rhombus, but we're going to use that information to try to figure out the measurements of A, B, and C. So because this is a rhombus, I know that this angle here has been bisected by that diagonal, which means I know that A is 28 degrees. They are congruent. I know that a diagonal would form a perpendicular with the other diagonal, so I know B is 90 degrees. And I'm going to utilize the information that this angle and this angle are congruent to tell me that that's 28 degrees. And now I can use this right triangle here to figure out my measurement for letter C. That would be 62 degrees for letter C. That's it for the notes for this lesson. You should be able to continue on to the exercises. Please let me know if you have any questions.